one thing um, that I noticed here in North America right now, as we are visiting here at a very difficult time, where at Haverford College, uh, where I'm a friend in residence, when, when the state itself is uh, taking the power, the God-given power to take away life, it, it gives a, a very, it sends a very wrong message to the people. This reminded, it took me back to our own situation in South Africa uh, 30 years ago. My name is Nozizwe Matlala Routledge. I live in Cape Town and I'm a member of the Quaker community of the Western Cape. My name is Jeremy Routledge. I live in Cape Town and I'm a member of the Quaker community in the Western Cape. At the time when I became involved with Quakers, there was a lot of violence in my country in South Africa. I was an activist in the struggle to end apartheid and we were faced with um, an onslaught of state-sponsored violence in our community. And uh, when I met uh, Jeremy, um, we often spoke about a way to respond to, to the violence. And of course, people were arming themselves, uh, activists were arming themselves, um, protecting their communities in that way because they could be attacked at any time uh, in, in the night. So we had very vigorous uh, discussions about how to respond to the violence. I had joined the African National Congress, the ANC, which had itself adopted violence as a means to respond to the government, the state. So I remember one conversation I had with Jeremy where he was insisting that it, would, it was never correct to use violence to respond to violence. I, I related to this um, and I think I got attracted to this idea of uh, responding non-violently uh, even though I don't think I was completely convinced <laughs> at the time. So going to Quakers for me was very, very important because it, it confirmed what I think was deep in my own personal understanding of violence and nonviolence. And, and my strengths grew in this and I find that it is the only answer. So at that time, when I joined as an attender, there was um, a growing opposition to the apartheid system in South Africa. I had um, helped to establish a, a women's organization called the Natal Organization of Women, which, which came together uh, annually uh, to commemorate the role of women in the struggle to end apartheid. And I worked uh, uh, closely with women. We formed this organization uh, which affiliated to the United Democratic Front. So it was a very uh, busy time for us and we marched in the streets. We called for the release of Nelson Mandela who was uh, serving a very long prison sentence. We asked for the unbanning of our organizations that had been banned in the uh, early 60s. So coming to Quakers was in some way a, 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 a space for me to be quiet because it was, it was very noisy out there. My first introduction to Quakerism was meeting one of four Quakers in Durban where I lived. Uh, the only one under 60 years old. Um, and she had been in Philadelphia at the movement for a new society and came back with lots of wonderful ideas, which I found fascinating. In the 70s, uh, the Soweto, uh, the government called them riots. Uh, others called them a peaceful protest, which was attacked. Um, it it uh, galvanized South Africa uh, into uh, white people questioning what was going on. A large number of my colleagues, friends, uh, immigrated to Australia or New, New Zealand. But I thought, I didn't think of leaving. And um, I started collecting newspaper cuttings and the church seemed to be playing an important role. And 
And then I came across a conscientious objector. The church had a series of pamphlets, and I thought, well, if you are a Christian, you must be a conscientious objector if you are white. And um, I saw a role for myself as a white South African in doing that. It just brings back all of that pain after I observed the very disturbing image of um, a man who was crying out uh, to the policeman who had his knee on his neck and he was crying out saying he, he, he couldn't breathe. It, it was difficult for me to imagine that such violence could happen from someone in uniform in a country that I regard as a free country. And it seems to be state uh, sponsored violence to me. I asked myself, so is this in the training of the police? that they are allowed to do this. In South Africa, we, we adopted a policy after 1994, where we did away with capital punishment. And the uh, idea behind this was that when, when the state itself is uh, taking the power, the God-given power to take away life, it, it gives a, a very, it sends a very wrong message to the people uh, because that is what capital punish, punishment is. In this particular instance, the, the policemen uh, took away someone's life. So it, it is disturbing, but it's encouraging to see that so many people are coming out in such large numbers, not only in this country, but around the world to, to protest this and to say, Enough is enough. Uh, Black lives matter. Thanks for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every Thursday. You can watch all our videos in this playlist here. You can subscribe to our channel by clicking this button here. You can support us through our Patreon here. Thanks again for watching and have a happy Thursday. <laughs>